Soundstripe. 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 Alright guys, welcome aboard for another round. Today I'm gonna to be playing the Lee Westwood Ultimate. Uh, there'll be a, a bit of interesting content on this one. There's, there's a few tricky holes here. A couple that have some odd elevation changes. So uh, stick around, I'll be explaining my process again and hopefully helping you guys out with a bit of support. Alright, so let's kick off. Um, so this first hole, this is one of the ones with quite a big elevation change. Uh, the approach shot here, not that it's super obvious when you have a look at the, um, the approach, but it plays with a lot of overplay, so clearly that means that there's quite a bit of elevation in play. So what I'm going to do, normally if I had a tail, a really good tailwind here, I'd just blast it. Try and get it as close to the green as possible and hopefully either get it on or get it very close for a, a no adjust rough shot with a voodoo or a ninja. Uh, but I don't have a very good tailwind here, so I'm just going to play it conservatively and go for my big foot, big foot approach. Um, so if you check out one of my other videos, I explained exactly what I do to get into big foot range, but um, if you want to go check that out, I think it was on Fellowship of the Rings, hole 4. To go have a look at that and I explain the process I go through but for today's purpose I'm just going to set my shots up for the approach. Uh, obviously the majority of my approaches will be with Bigfoot, it's my favourite long line so I think they might, depending on the setup here today, there might be a couple of holes with uh, that need long the lightning rod, so we'll wait and see what we're looking at. Alright, so this hole, as I said, the approach shot plays with a lot of overplay. A um, couple of ways you can approach that, you can either uh, offset your shot and let it play for the secondary wind or you can uh, add a, a defined percentage 
to your shot um, and that will just come with a bit of trial and error but uh, that's what I'm going to do here so I'm going to set it up pretty much like a normal shot uh, and then I'm going to just add a little bit to my adjustment value to compensate for that extra secondary wind tough shot this one so I'm not expecting to make it but um, let's try and see what we can do so just counting back my rings from max As I said, quite a lot of secondary here, so I know there's going to be a really strong rollout. Uh, might come forward uh, about half a ring from there. Let's have a look. Sounds right. Mm, that should be pretty good. It'll be close. Just 3.1 rings here. If anything, this might roll just a little bit past the left edge of the cup. <laughs> exactly what I said was going to happen. Uh, dear idea. So yeah, pray for tar wind on that hole. It's a tough hole. Within the root range, so I'm gonna I'm gonna plant my root here. Pretty close to max here, so I might just change to a gold cup ball. A little bit more distance, a little bit less wind resistance. So I can set up a lot closer to max with this ball and still make sure I get pretty close adjusting forward in a headwind. Let's see where we're at. So two rings back from next. Bit of tail there. Uh, sorry, a bit of headwind there. So it is going to slow down once it stops after the first bounce. rings for max. That's pretty good. It's a tiny bit of back spin off, not much though.
Lucky kiss on the flag there. I'll take that. See what we got next. Salvage drive. Right, so this one's a pretty standard hole, no elevation and a very soft green, so we can play it pretty, pretty aggressively. Just gonna set myself up for a big foot shot. Okay, so as I said, this is a very soft green, so I'm going to set it up very close to the hole here. Um, as you can see, when I line it up down the middle, it kicks pretty hard to the left. So the first thing I'm going to do is straighten that back up to compensate for the break. And because it had such a strong break to the left, I probably want to overcompensate a little bit. Um, so that's probably pretty good. Two and a half right spin, which is quite a lot of adjustment to counteract the break. So it's probably still going to fall slightly to the left after I take my shot, but we'll go through that in a second. Hey Rhino, cheers brother, hope you have a good day at work mate. It's got your clock here brother, I won't rub it in. So as I said, very soft green, and I've got a pretty strong headwind. <clears throat> so I can pretty much set it up in the cup here, and I should still get a pretty good shot at it. Um, yeah, so I think I'll set it up in the cup, and we'll just see how we go. So as, as I said before, quite a lot of counter spin to compensate for that heavy break to the left. Because I've counteracted the spin with a lot of, sorry, counteracted the break with a lot of side spin, um, I can still set it up pretty much in the cup because of the side spin will overcome that break. Which is the way I like to play it. There's a few different ways you can do it, but um, that's just the way I like to do it. I think it gives a more consistent look at the hole. Uh, so that's just the way I play that. Gonna calculate my wind adjustment. And at some point I'll make a video explaining this process in a bit more detail. Um, if you have a look on the Ultimate Golf Facebook page, I did put a video up there probably a couple of months ago now. 
um, that goes through the process. You might want to have a look at that, but um, I'll, I'll definitely put out some content on how to calculate your adjustment value if you don't have a, an app or a calculator or anything like that. Um, you can do it all manually, so there's no need for any of that kind of stuff if you don't want to use it. See how we go. So there you go. Um, heavy break to the left. I didn't need to offset to the right of the cup because I used so much side spin. Um, yeah, nice little drop there. This, this is a bit of a tricky hole. Um, no elevation changes, but it's got a really odd kick right at the cup. So I'll give you a look at that in a second. I'll show you how to set up for those kind of oddities in the game. Alright, so what I like to do, I start in front of the cup to look at what the break looks like before the hole, but then I also like to drag the target up towards the hole to see what happens. So as you can see, there's a heavy break right to left in front of the cup, and then as I get closer, it uh, straightens back up quite a lot. So, I'm going to use a little bit of overspin here again, but I'm going to set it up straight into the cup. Um, normally you don't do this on most holes, but there's a few odd greens at Colt. Five point five rings back from max, and we're still quite a bit short, especially with the headwind. Uh, and again, soft greens are cold, so we're going to bring it forward about a third of a ring, Sounds right. and take a tiny bit of backspin off just to let it roll out. Alright, so that looks pretty good. Now we're just going to set it up into the cup. I've got a left to right headwind. So I know it's going to fall back towards the right a little bit. Um, which I want anyway in this instance. Because I've got a right to left break on the green. So that should help it keep in a straighter line. So that looks pretty good. Yeah, by grip, that looks good. Alright. Just gonna do my calculations.
So while I'm setting up my shot here, so I'm going to adjust 3.3 .3 rings. Uh, someone asked me a question the other day after they watched the stream. Just asking how I figure out what portion of a ring I'm sitting at. Um, depending on the shot, uh, I'll, I'll use a, a divider on the ring. Sometimes if I'm if it's a number that's close to the midpoint, I'll start in the middle and then I'll move back that tiny little bit. Um, if it's something close to a third of a ring, I'll, you know, I'll put it a bit further forward and then visualize what halfway through the rest of the ring looks like. So I can basically cut it into thirds. Um, so this in this case, I'm looking for a third of, uh, sorry, 0.3 of a ring. So it's a little bit less than a third. Uh, so yeah, something like that is about a third. So if I come back a tiny bit from that. Probably about 0.3. Let's see how we go. That'll do. Beats and starts. See if we can keep this going. All right, so this one, as most of you probably know, is one of the tougher par fives at Colts. Pretty hard green, this one, and it's. Uh, seems to overplay quite a lot so I'm basically I'm just gonna blast it down the middle and um, see if I can get somewhere about mid-range with a root It's probably pretty close to max root, which is good. Right, so I've hit it a little bit too far here. It's definitely in between clubs, so I'm going to go and switch to my lightning rod. Not the best hole to use a lightning rod on, but uh, when you're stuck like that, there's really no other choice. Mm. I could use Pegasus. I hate Pegasus. <laughs> it's not my favourite club. As uh, Henry will tell you, he's been trying to get me to use Pegasus for ages now, and I just will not budge, so... I'm going to stick with the lightning rod. With this green and a tailwind, it's probably going to run over, but uh, we'll see how we go. <clears throat> it's tricky having the two tiered green as well, especially when you're setting up close to it because you, you have to compensate for that elevation change in the green, but uh, in this case, it shouldn't affect us too much. So let's just count rings back to our shot position. It's 10. Let's see what 20 looks like. Right, so that's still far too close. 
Let me go back another four. So I'm just visualizing the third bounce here. Still pretty close, so we'll go back again. So maybe another one, we're pretty close to the edge of the green there. So we're 25 rings back. Yeah, that doesn't look too bad. We might overshoot, but as I said, tough part five. If you make this one, yeah, that's pretty much a, a round changer for you. Cheers, Jared. Thanks for watching, mate. Sounds right. Decent start today for a change. Finally getting over the streaming jitters and the nerves. Starting to get back to my normal game, which is good. Uh, so as I said earlier, some of these holes at Colt, they have elevational changes as you come up towards the green uh, predominantly increased elevation towards the green so you need to counteract that with either offset uh, towards the wind direction or using different numbers for your club and as I said I prefer to use different numbers because I can still then set my shot up pretty consistently so in this case that's what I'm going to do if this drops just a bonus not really expecting anything here I just want to get it close all right let's see here we go Lots of secondary there. That left to right tail really pushed it up past the cup. So it is what it is. Still three from the first five, which is usually good for a win. Another tricky little hole. So I'm gonna Sounds have to right. do I might switch back to Bigfoot so that I've got more range with my I am root. And I'll probably use that for the shot. Maybe with a lower power ball. So that my min distance is further back than with a trophy ball. Yeah, nice one, Jazza. That's the main thing, mate. Um, a lot of those par fours, you just want to be as close as you can get to max with whatever long iron you prefer to use. I think, as I said the other day, the consistency that you get with the long irons is so much better than the short irons and some of the, um, the woods. So you definitely you're definitely going about it the right way, mate. That that's the best approach to take for sure. Right, 
that. So, same as any other setup, I'm just using spin to counteract the break of the green. So on, it's breaking right to left, so I'm applying right spin to straighten it back up. Uh, that headwind is slightly left to right, so that should keep it on the high side of the cup a little bit. But it's almost a straight headwind, so I'm not going to get much advantage from that and I will probably n still need to compensate for the, the break just a little bit. So let's count back. That's 10. Strong headwind, so I want to get right up close. Yeah. If you visualize the ball guide, that's probably going to drop about there with a little bit of rollout, but it's a very bouncy green this one, as you can see the shot arc after the first bounce is quite long. So that means I'm going to get more rollout, but I know that there's a lot of secondary wind on this course, so I'm going to bring it forward. Maybe there, maybe that's too far forward. We'll find out in a second. And as I said, right to left break on this green, so I need to counteract that a little bit which I've done with the spin and then I'm still going to set it up slightly right of the flag <clears throat> just to make sure that I've got enough room to counteract that break yeah that looks pretty good I nearly forgot my ring count then. I think that's the hardest part about trying to play live and talk. Just remembering where your setup is. Sounds drive. Alright, so my adjustment that I'm going to use here is about 3.6 rings. Uh, as I said, if I'm close to the midpoint of a ring, I'll start there and then I'll use a divisor to adjust forward or backwards. So in this case, I'm going to split the half of the ring into five uh, fifths, which is going to give me another tenth. It's all just about visualizing it. I don't go too crazy with any extra rules or anything like that, but um, maybe that might help me a bit more, I don't know. So we're at a half ring there, and I'm going to go back another tenth of a ring, or a fifth of what's left. So we'll go back to about there, that looks pretty good. Should be close. Might be a slight miss. Oh! <laughs> Ouch! That's a robbery, that. Oh well. Can't drop them all.
<laughs> yeah, I'm angry too, mate. <laughs> oh well, shit happens. What am I looking at to get on top here? Twelve, so even if I don't get any more, I'll still be shot in front. But let's try and get a couple more to make sure of this thing. Right, so <clears throat> I'm going to switch back to the trophy ball here because this should be pretty close to Max Bigfoot. Yep. Uh, one thing with this green, it slopes slightly back towards the T. Uh, and when you lose elevation, when you're adjusting your shot, it's going to pull back a little bit more than you expect, so you just need to account for that in your setup. Three point five rings back, soft green, so I can set it up nice and close. even a little bit closer than that pretty strong tail there but as I said I'm going to adjust down slightly so I think that's a pretty good position Still quite a bit of break left to right here, so I'm just going to counteract that again. Straight at the cup. Do my adjustments. Yeah, I do, mate. I'll explain that in a second. Let me just take this shot. But I, I do pull through the center. That's my preferred method. There's a few different ways to do it. Right, so three point five ish. Slightly more then. Let's get this one, come on. Happy days. <clears throat> uh, so yeah, you're right, Jared. I do pull through the center ring every time and always count it as two rings. Um, so a few different guys have measured the ring sizes in this game um, and we've noted that the center ring is actually a larger ring uh, and the, the white rings <coughs> versus the transparent rings are actually slightly larger so not that I'm going to measure it right now but um, if you look at the size of a white ring versus a clear ring they're actually slightly larger so I think the white ring is 1.1 actual rings or you know, pixel sizes whatever you want to call it and a point uh, the clear ring is 0.9 but what I've actually done is set my numbers up to incorporate a little bit of offset for those um, for the ring sizes so when I did all my testing when I first started getting my numbers together 
I, I always tested as if the centering was two, not 2.2. Um, so that meant that I've got quite a different set of min and max numbers than most guys use in the game. Uh, and the calculator that I built to do everything incorporates that as well. So really there's not a lot of difference. You can do it both ways. Uh, if you take the true value of each ring size, then you just need to account for that in your numbers. So if you're, if you're pulling three rings, uh, that's, that's not three visual rings. It's going to be three point uh, 2.9 rings of visual rings because you've got 1.1 and 1.1 and then a 0.9 which gets you to 3.1 if you if you look at the rings based on their actual size uh, so if you're going to play like that you need to understand the the actual size of the rings but if you want to incorporate an offset like I do then it doesn't really come into play I've tested numbers between uh, wind values between you know three and a half and 15 and the approach that I use plays very consistently so you don't need to you don't need to worry about that too much all right so this hole uh, word of warning don't play to the left this tree just here this one is in play so you want to avoid that so I'm going to set it up as far to the right as I can really nah. I was going to see if you could blast it there but not a chance So all I'm aiming to do here is to get it close to my Max Bigfoot. It ends up pretty close to min distance with your driver. And yeah, that looks pretty good. And as I said, I want to avoid that tree on the left. So I'm going to come back to the right. No sweat mate, happy to explain it, that's what I'm here for. Hopefully I can uh, help you guys pick up on some of the finer points of the game a bit quicker. Just send me a PM if you want to ask anything specific mate, happy to help. Tailwind here, and this is another soft green, so I can pretty much set it up right up to the cup. Let's see, I think I was explaining the other day that the, the shape of the arc helps you determine how much backspin your ball's going to get. In this case, you know, it's a very short, steep arc. That just means the ball's going to stop very quickly even in a tailwind and we've, uh, we've got a slight uh, loss of elevation as we pull back for the tailwind so I can set it up real close um, I might start at four rings instead of five and see how that looks
Let's drive. Ooh. Too much. Yeah, what once you get that range set up down, Jared, it makes the game so much easier. Um Yeah, I mean you your short iron options pretty much are Orion and Spectre once they level up a bit. Um, I think the, the level 7 epic is Rattler and it looks like a really good club but I just haven't had a chance to really play with it yet uh, but with the main shot iron Spectre and Orion it's just they're, they're hard to read unless you're on a, a good par 3 to use them so if you can avoid being in short iron range and a par 4 as much as possible it's always going to benefit you uh, but it, one thing as well because you can change clubs mid hole in this game if you find yourself near Bigfoot Min um, you can get rid of your short iron which will increase your range for your long iron same same concept as you're used to the uh the club underneath will always play to its max range so if you just go out and switch to a, a shorter range club underneath uh, then you'll get more range with the club above which is always a handy tip if you ever find yourself between clubs often you can uh, keep yourself within range of the club that you prefer. Let's see if I can get one more. Hopefully it's one of the short part fours of Colt. No it's not, but this one has a nice soft green so pretty consistent approach shot here. Drive. Cheers, Jared. Have a good day, mate.
Sounds true. Uh, let's get this final one. Come on. Ooh. Not to be. Couple of heartbreakers in that round. Still, should hold for first. Yeah, 900. They never feel good. Stupid. Stupid me. <laughs> Alright. Well, that's me done, ladies and gents. Nice little nine hole playthrough. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you got something out of it, more importantly. Um, if you got any questions, just hit me up on the Facebook group or on my YouTube page. If you're enjoying the content, please don't forget to subscribe. And until next time, good luck out there today, guys. And I hope you enjoy the week with Lee Westwood on board. I'm very much looking forward to it.